In this presentation, I will cover basics of cardiac MRI pulse sequences. The pulse sequences that we're going to discuss include black blood images, which are used for anatomy, bright blood images, which are used for dynamic imaging and for angiography, phase contrast images, which are used to quantify flow, delayed enhancement to look for infarct, inflammation, or infiltrative diseases, gadolinium-assisted MRAs to look for nice vessel angiography, and tagging images which are utilized for physiologic evaluation. So let's start with the black blood images which are used traditionally for anatomy. These are generally a spin echo pulse sequence. Traditionally they're T1 or T2 weighted and again just to remind you of basic physics whenever a image is T1 weighted it has a short TE time and a short TR time. If an image is T2 weighted, it has a long TE time and a long TR time. Generally, these are fast or turbo spin echo techniques. Currently, in cardiac imaging, we're using a double inversion recovery pulse sequence. This is a variation on a traditional spin echo pulse sequence, which uses two inversion recovery pulses, which I'll discuss in just a second. The benefit of the two inversion pulses is that it leads to a better blood suppression. The one thing I want to point out is that in cardiac imaging the R to R interval generally determines the TR time. So in these double inversion recovery images the images are generally more of a proton density weighted with a short TE and a long TR time. So let me illustrate how the double inversion recovery technique works. Initially what happens is the majority of the magnetic spins of the entire volume, so the entire patient, are lined up along the axis of the magnetic field. The first inversion recovery pulse is placed, which flips the majority of the spins in the opposite direction for the entire volume which would be the body of the patient. The second inversion pulse flips back only the spins, the majority of the spins, within the actual slice that you're going to acquire the data. The idea here then is to acquire our final signal when the spins that were flipped in the entire body have reached 90 degrees back to full recovery along the main magnetic field so that essentially there is a null signal from any spins that were outside of the slice at the time of the initial pulse. The idea here is is that blood that was in the slice is going to move out. Blood that was out of the slice will move into the slice and this blood was prepared in such a way that by the time it gets into the slice it's going to give us no signal. So the result of the double IR technique is that we get better blood suppression. You can also perform a triple inversion recovery. The triple inversion recovery is performed so that the third inversion pulse results in suppression of fat. So this is more traditional of what you see with STIR images and MSK imaging. Part of the problem is, is that by the time you get three inversion pulses, you end up with a poor signal to noise. Therefore, many times when I'm performing fat suppression, I prefer to use a double IR technique with a chemical fat sat rather than using a triple inversion recovery pulse sequence. Haste images are a single shot fast spin echo technique. So these are very, very fast. The echo train is split in half. Basically, you take two echo trains to get the entire set of Y lines to create the black blood images. These are heavily 2-2 weighted due to the long echo train. So here we can see a different selection of black blood images. The single shot fast spin echo technique, the haste technique. You can see again the black blood very nicely. A T2 weighted image that has some fat sat. You can see that this is a chemical fat sat. 
You can see that there's some inhomogeneity in the fat saturation, but around the heart there's very nice fat saturation. And then just a standard double IR. The bright blood sequences are gradient echo. These are generally a spoiled gradient echo with an unbalanced gradient. The signal is influenced by the flow velocity. By this I mean it's influenced by spin refresh. So the faster the flow velocity, for example during systole in the aorta, the brighter the blood is going to be. And during diastole or where there's slower flow, the blood is not going to be near as bright. This is the workhorse on 3T magnets because of the SAR limitations that you run into by using more of a balanced steady state free procession. The SSFP with balance gradients that we traditionally use on 1.5T magnets. The benefit of this balance gradient SSFP is that the signal is fairly uniform regardless of the flow velocity. This really is our workhorse technique on 1.5T magnets and hopefully as we move forward in the future with 3T, it's becoming more and more useful and hopefully we'll be able to completely use a balanced SSFP pulse sequence all the time when we're using 3T magnets. You can also perform cine gradient echo techniques. You can do them either prospective or retrospectively gated. In prospective, the magnet, uh, the scanner, is going to look for the R wave and then it's going to acquire data after that for a given amount of time, the acquisition window. It'll look for the next R wave and then acquire data again. With retrospective gating, it's going to acquire data continuously and then seeing where those R waves are, it's going to go back and divide up the data and div divide the data into different chunks to make the retrospective images. You can get multiple phases at one slice location in a single breath hold. The one cardiac cycle that we see on our images are going to be composed from Y lines from multiple cardiac cycles that were acquired at the time of data acquisition. You can also perform a single shot. The single shot allows you to get a single phase at multiple locations during one breath hold as opposed to a cine which gets you multiple phases at one slice location per breath hold. So here you can see some examples of bright blood gradient echo images. These are both cine pulse sequences. The one on the left is a balanced steady state free procession versus the one on the right which is a spoiled gradient echo. As you can see the images on the left the brightness of the blood is essentially uniform during the entire cardiac cycle so regardless of flow velocity the blood is as relative same brightness as opposed to the image on the right where you can see this is a case of dissection and you can see that the high velocity blood is much brighter than the low velocity blood. So here in the true lumen during systole you can see how the blood gets very bright and then during diastole or when there's slower flowing blood the blood is much darker. Here is a single shot balanced steady state free procession. So this would have been one image in a whole stack of images. Again remember with the single shot you can get multiple slice locations at one phase during a single breath hold versus a cine images where you're only looking at one slice but you get multiple phases during a single breath hold. You can also do real time either gated or non-gated. So the benefit of this is that you're not acquiring the data over multiple cardiac cycles. You are actually acquiring the data for example in the gated you're acquiring all five to seven images that represent a cardiac cycle from a single cardiac cycle. As you can see the temporal resolution is slower when you're doing real-time images so you can only get about five to seven images in a cardiac cycle whereas if we're doing a segmented approach the images that I just showed you where we are collecting multiple Y lines from each cardiac cycle we can control we can get images 20 phases per cardiac cycle, even 30 phases per cardiac cycle with temporal resolutions well less than 50 milliseconds. In a non-gated situation, this is good to look for things like tumor invasion. It's also good in pericardial constriction cases where you want the patient to be free breathing and you just want to see 
as the heart's beating and the patient is breathing, what the overall effect is on the hemodynamics within the heart. So here you can see a real-time short axis slice, which is non-gated. So this is just a very, very fast pulse sequence. You can see the heart beating. At the same time, you can see the patient breathing. So you can do dynamic assessment of the physiology within the heart. Phase contrast. Anytime we need to do actual quantitative measurements, we're going to use phase contrast when we're looking at flow. So we're going to have a magnitude and a phase image. The magnitude image is used to demonstrate the anatomy, and the phase image is the image that actually has the data that the computer will analyze to give us our flow measurements. So this pulse sequence is key for quantitative measurements of flow. We can not only measure velocities, but we can also measure volumes. So you can see here the magnitude and the phase image. The image on the left is your nice magnitude image, which is going to show you your anatomy. And the image on the right is your phase image, which has the data within it that the computer can analyze to measure flow velocities and flow volumes. And on my YouTube channel here, I have a whole nother lecture on actually how to process quantitative data, ventricular function, as well as flow. So please watch that other lecture for how to process these images. Delayed enhancement. So this is a 2D steady state free procession image with an inversion recovery prep and the idea behind this is to look for areas of delayed enhancement that can indicate infarct inflammation or an infiltrative process basically what happens is gadolinium contrast is going to wash in wash out of the normal myocardium and the contrast however will collect in extracellular space so when there's fibrous tissue such as an infarct, the contrast will collect there. If there's inflammation, there's going to be edema. This will be extracellular space with edema. The contrast will collect there. And when there's some type of an infiltrative process, there's also going to be abnormal tissue within the myocardium, or there's going to be edema, which is going to result in contrast collecting in these areas. So we're really looking for abnormal tissue within the myocardium with our delayed enhancement images. Here's a four chamber view and a short axis view. You can see that the myocardium, the normal myocardium is very dark, it's black. That is the way we pick it. We do a inversion time scout image where we try multiple different inversion times and then we pick the inversion time that has the blackest myocardium and that's how we acquire the images. And then we're looking for areas of bright signal suggesting infarct, inflammation, or infiltration. Gadolinium assisted MRAs. This is a 3D fast spoiled gradient echo pulse sequence. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this for the evaluation of vessels, anatomy, and stenosis. Many times today I'm actually just performing this with the single shot steady state free procession images those nice bright blood images and in general many times now we don't actually have to get gadolinium to see very nice vessel angiography with bright blood but here is a gadolinium assisted MRA we've acquired multiple different phases here so we've actually acquired data at each of these phases and you can see the image on the left we've selected the phase or the set of data that was acquired with the nice contrast within the aorta. But you could see we could actually pick a phase where the pulmonary artery is well enhanced. We could pick a phase where the pulmonary veins are well enhanced. So we can pick, we can acquire multiple phases if we use a very fast pulse sequence of about six seconds to acquire the full 3D data set. Then we can divide that up and we can actually look at images from uh, different phases of the contrast injection highlighting the vessels that we want to see as the contrast transits through the different vessels. Tagging. Tagging is used for physiologic evaluation. It's a composite pulse sequence that's based on a gradient echo, a spoiled gradient echo sequence. There's an RF interference pattern and using this RF interference pattern we're able to make a physiologic assessment. Generally what we're talking about here is a grid pattern 
or a line pattern, which is utilized to evaluate the movement within the heart. Here you can see we're using just lines. What we're actually looking at here is looking at the pericardium. So we're looking at the pericardial interface here to see if the lines break, which you can see in this case the lines do break. They slide past each other. That indicates that there's no adhesion between the layers of the pericardium versus if they bend, which would indicate adhesions. You can also place a grid on the myocardium and then do an analysis of that grid to evaluate the actual thickening and therefore the wall motion within the different segments of the left ventricle. So you can actually get quantitative evaluation of the left ventricular function. Thank you very much for your attention and please feel free to send me an email if you have questions about this presentation.